Oh, hi. I was just playing some Batman, Revenge of the Joker. No, 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 not Return of the Joker, Revenge of the Joker. It's the same thing, but on the Genesis. Oh, and there's an unreleased SNES prototype, too. They're both pretty terrible. Come to think of it, the NES game is pretty terrible, too. First of all, it's a shooting game. I mean, what is Batman doing running around shooting these crazy projectile weapons? I've literally never done that. And why am I flying across the screen with a jetpack on? Is Batman also Vic Viper? I think this game is meant to be challenging, but it's just the wrong kind of hard. Most Nintendo hard games can be beaten with practice and determination, but this game just puts you in situations where you have no choice but to take damage. Sometimes getting through a level has more to do with luck. The tornadoes in 3 1 just path randomly. Sometimes they hit you, sometimes they don't. It's not challenge, it's just bad design. Why would I be in a snowfield? Gotham doesn't have snowfields! Where has all this detail and animation been hiding? I just played through six levels of dark, motionless, drab backgrounds, and now I'm in a lush jungle. Gotham doesn't have jungles! Why couldn't more of the levels look like this? And what's up with these bosses? Batman has the most extensive rogues gallery in the history of comic books. There are dozens of villains they could have chosen. What's up with these generic designs? Looks like something Clark would fight. Why are there so many crates? You can shoot the weapon to change it to whichever one you want, so why are there so many? There's only one weapon that's any good. Also, I, the charged up shot is pretty useless, so it's way better to just use a controller with turbo. Oh, my controllers have turbo! If you collect enough of these orbs, Batman goes Super Saiyan, but it only lasts for a few seconds. It's pretty pointless. Bat Saiyan! Okay, Batman is known for being fast and agile. Why is he so hard to control here? He moves so slow, and sometimes he can't jump if he's in the middle of walking. No one can control me! Don't get me wrong, as a kid I was really into this game. After all, the sprites are large and pretty colorful for a Nintendo game. And you have to admit, this slide is pretty overpowered. But to be fair, you could have slapped a Batman logo on anything in the 90s and kids would buy it. That's pretty much exactly what we did. I only recently found out about these 16-bit ports, one that was released for the Genesis in 1992 and an unreleased SNES prototype. The cool thing about these versions is that they were developed by two totally different studios and have a completely different art style and different gameplay. Right off the bat, the Genesis version is a lot more colorful than its NES counterpart, as should be expected from the more powerful Genesis. I really like how Batman has the 1990s color scheme from the comics. It looks a lot more like the Batman we all know. On the other hand, a lot of the artwork looks really terrible, especially the in-between level sequences and the bosses almost look like crayon rules. They look like Damien drew them! The cape animation is cool, and Batman does a cool pose if you stand still for a second. I am the best at cool poses. But man, Batman is even slower in this game, and even regular enemies take like a million hits to kill. Try kicking them. Okay, tag that with your foot. Wait, the kick kills them in one shot? So I can shoot them with my sonic neutralizer 400 times and they don't die, but one kick does it. I know, I kick really hard. This is torture to play. How is this game released commercially? This is a mess. It's even worse than the NES version. If you put my name on anything in the 90s, people would buy it. I mean, at least in stage 1-2 I can see where the bombs are going to land and try to avoid them. That's something. The infamous 3-1 is total bullshit, this is unplayable. Well, maybe the Super Nintendo version is better. Don't count on it! 
Alright, Batman doesn't look as cool as the Genesis one, but he does have a comic book color palette. The rest of the art is pretty bad, but not Genesis version bad, but man, it's still pretty bad. Okay, the controls are definitely a lot better. You move a lot faster in this one. The music isn't bad either. This one might actually be pretty good. I wonder why it was never released. Huh. I can't change the weapon by shooting at it. I guess I have to take whatever drops. These weapons do seem a lot stronger, though. A lot of these crates are empty. I don't see any of those orbs, but at least the weapons stack and become stronger if you collect more than one of the same kind. Wow, there are no bombs anymore. The Zeppelin just keeps throwing enemies at me. I love enemies. There's no better way to crack down on crime than by sending lifetime criminals with no education, job skills, or medical insurance to the emergency room! It looks like some of the levels were redesigned. It's definitely more platforming here. I think I would enjoy this version more if the art style weren't so ugly. There's no gradius level either. The ice level feels a little more fair. Uh, oh. Oh no. These tornadoes basically kill you in one hit now, and the wizards are impossible to kill. I know. Wow, this level is totally impossible. No wonder this game was never released. The level design is a mess, and the difficulty is totally unreasonable. This is worse than the NES version. If you put my name on anything in the 90s, people would buy it. If I'm going to play this one, it's definitely going to be the NES version. That was released in 1991, following up on the success of the movie tie-in game that came before. But instead of another game based on a movie, it's a standalone game that takes most of its inspiration from comic books. The movie tie-in game was basically a cancelled project with a Batman skin over it, and it was hugely successful. Not just because it had Batman in it, but also because it was a great game. You had wall jumping, cool cutscenes, and challenging but reasonable gameplay. It looks like Sunsoft wanted to take a similar approach with a follow-up, make a game that has absolutely nothing to do with Batman, and then throw a Batman skin on it. However, this was meant to be a Batman game at the start. The storyline is that the Joker has escaped from Arkham Asylum and used a gang of mercenaries to terrorize Gotham by targeting the city with missiles full of Joker gas. A pretty simple plot and adequate for a side-scrolling shooter like this one. The original NES game was developed and published by Sunsoft. One cool fact I was able to find out is that this game actually used a third-party memory mapper, which was very uncommon for NES games at the time. The game was designed by Yoshiaki Iwata and Tadashi Kojima. No, no, not that Kojima. Iwata is best known for his work on Lemmings and Blaster Master on the NES. I wasn't able to find any info online about Kojima. The music for all commercially released versions, including the Game Boy version, was done by Naoki Kodaka, who composed music for video games from 1986 to 1997 and has worked on Spy Hunter. Blaster Master, Batman, and Journey to Silius. Today, Kodaka is a college professor teaching music to a new generation of composers. The Genesis version is also credited to Tommy Talarico, who you may know as the founder of Video Games Live. Talarico has been composing music for video games since working on Prince of Persia for the Game Boy in 1991, and still composes video game music today. Talarico has over 300 games in his credit, and has also released albums and hosted TV shows. The Genesis port was handled by a developer called Brainler Studios, which as far as I can tell was a one-man operation, or at the very least a very small company. Ed Ringler also developed the Genesis version of Play Fighter and a few sports games. The bulk of their work seemed to be importing sports games for various consoles. The company was bought out by Micro League Multimedia in 1996. The SNES version was developed by Icom Studios. Icom dissolved in 1998, five years after being purchased by Viacom. You would think the gaming world would know by now not to outsource porting of a Batman game to a third party, but I guess the old habits die on. Unfortunately, further information on these titles is scarce online, so I'm afraid I don't have much trivia to share with you on the games today. The SNES version remains a mystery, a leaked prototype that was never meant to see the light of day. If you are going to play Batman Return of the Joker, I'd stick to the NES version, but really you're better off playing just about anything else. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and enable notifications. Those are the way that YouTube evaluates how their channels are doing. So if you want to see more of me in your search results, you want to see more of me on your homepage, a like, a comment, and subscribe. Those are all great ways to do it. Sharing, of course, is one of the best ways, because then other people will like, subscribe, and so on and so forth. I've also got some affiliate links down below if you want to buy yourself some swag. I'll get a little piece of the action if you do that. 
It's not much, but it's something. And it's very appreciated if you do. Of course, I also have a Patreon available if you would like to donate directly to the channel. Donations right now would really help me out to grow this channel and make it a lot better. I have a lot of limitations. I don't have any budget at all to speak of right now, so having a few bucks to use for the channel would go a long way. Thank you once again for your time and watching the video today, and until next time, game over.